I'd like to start the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the uh, first item here, and I may ask uh, our foot treasurer to help. We um, had a problem during the week of January 15th getting water from the city of Hammond. That's where our water comes from. And they had contacted the town, indicated that they were not able to deliver the amount of water we normally get, which is somewhere around 12,000 gallons a minute. They were only able to deliver 300. So that's a substantial reduction. The uh, Pepsi America was contacted. They're our largest consumer of water in the city, or the town here, I'm sorry. And they were more than willing to accommodate and assist us with that situation. And they uh, actually uh, shut down their operation with the cleaning and helped us out to keep water in the tanks and flowing freely. Ms. Wendy, I don't have that letter, but can you give the highlight? I can. The, the town council wrote the following letter. We are writing this letter to express our appreciation for the responsible and proactive actions taken by PepsiCo America in response to the water supply challenges faced by the town of Munster on January 17, 2024. As you may be aware, the water inlet from Lake Michigan, which supplies Hammond and surrounding communities, including Munster, experienced freezing conditions. Munster was forced to implement water usage restrictions to ensure the conservation of this precious resource. Given that PepsiCo is the largest user of the water of water in our town, your cooperation in reducing water consumption played a pivotal role in preventing the depletion of our water tanks. The, the decision to shut down the production line on January 17th and resume operations on January 19th at 6 a.m demonstrated a commendable commitment to responsible water usage. By temporarily halting operations, you were able to save a significant amount of water, bottling 403,000 gallons less than the usual production amount. This remarkable reduction greatly contributed to our efforts to conserve water in our holding tanks. Thanks to PepsiCo's willingness to collaborate with the community and take swift action, Munster residents and locals did not experience any reduction in water usage during this challenging period. Your initiative showcased a strong sense of corporate responsibility, environmental stewardship, and community partnership. On behalf of the residents of Munster, we extend our sincere gratitude to PepsiCo North America for your understanding, cooperation, and commitment to sustainable practices. Your actions have not only safeguarded our community's water supply, but have also set a positive example for your responsible corporate citizenship. Sincerely, the town council, town of Munster. Thank you. All righty. That uh, takes us up to public comment. We have that at the beginning of the meeting. We kindly ask all that in person public comment is limited to two minutes maximum per person or five minutes for a group vote person. Please keep your comments civil and constructive and related to public policy issues. In the event questions are posed to the council, we will note your questions in the meeting minutes and we will refer them to the appropriate departments or staff follow-up and response. Public comments may be um, submitted electronically. If you have a question or comments about them or about an item on the agenda that you would like to have entered into the meeting minutes, please email them the, to the, the uh, email them that question comments to the clerk treasurer, Wendy Miss, 
at mmis at munster.org. Um, with that, I'm not sure how many people would like to come forward and make a comment, but I'd like to have it be orderly and constructive, and we would like to have their name and address That's for the record, please. So who would like to come up and uh, make a comment? You want me to sign the sheet too? Okay. Mike Dumovic, 1833 Tula Plain. <laughs> Two things. Uh, you need to make a correction to your minutes from the meeting of January 8th. I did not confirm the responsibility for removing the beavers from the creek. I asked the question <laughs> about who was responsible. And I believe it was Dustin Anderson who responded that it was uh, the Lake County. Thank you, Mike. We'll fix okay. That. Secondly, <laughs> on the agenda, you have about approving changing the time for the closing of Centennial Park. I would hopefully uh, or hope that you would approve that 10 o'clock time. Dusk doesn't work. Dusk changes every day. And the other thing is, it's not consistently enforced at Centennial. I've been there past dusk, and then I've been there at dusk when they've come by, but all you see is maybe the blue light special going through, and they don't say anything, or if they do, if you're fishing in a certain area, you can't hear them. A set time would be the ideal thing, and that's it. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Haas Fatemi. I live at 1901 Fisher Street. What are the plans for backfilling the position of town manager? With a town of this size and complexity, it only makes sense to have the position filled with a dedicated full-time employee. As representatives of the town, I would hope the council members would communicate to Munster residents if the town manager position is not going to be backfilled. What reasons are there? What happens to the town manager's budgeted salary? <clears throat> Not having a town manager in Munster would be akin to not having the police chief for Munster PD. In regards to resolution 2123, why does it lean heavy into the idea of reduction in force? Are there plans to do mass layoffs of Munster employees? What would the town council need to, or why would the town council need to do this? There aren't any budget shortfalls that have been communicated to the town that I am aware of. Shouldn't any changes in personnel happen after a town manager is hired so that person can make a proper strategic, strategic decision that could affect services to the Munster residents? Without proper communication and transparency that everybody has talked about prior to the election and after the election, it will help or it will actually prevent um, confidence in the residents of Munster to the abilities of the town council. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Speaker. What was your name again, please? Haas Fatemi, 1901 Fisher Street. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Stan Jajak. I live in the 400 block of South Street, Munster. And first, I'd like to say you four new members. God bless you. Welcome. I wish you nothing but happiness, health, and a good term. With that being said, I got four or five things I'd love to talk to you about. I got two minutes, so I'm gonna leave it at one. About a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, you just had basically a non transparent meeting with people who were putting together proposed changes for Ridge Road. And I loved it when the man said it works great in Southern California. Take a look at Southern California. Does Munster want to be like that? With that being said, once I read through documents that were put out by Munster, town of, Munster received $17.4 million for the new reconstruction of Ridge Road. With that being said, specifically to Mr. Schenken, Mr. Hopper, Mr. Nellens, and Mr. Peterson left you out. You ran unopposed. 
So you don't have to answer it. But I have one question. This is the platform you ran on. Do you plan on adhering to that platform? Or are we going to look at money and just being saying, hey, we got the money, we got to do something different with it? Take a look at our residential roads due to the traffic that's coming from NICD and RDA. Look at what's being proposed, high ride housing. You can't even park in the northwest side of Munster, the north side of Munster, and the western side of Munster. Today, I was driving, and God bless the gentleman. He was not a young gentleman. He come across the street. Don't stop at the street. Throw his bicycle and looked at me while I was driving a pickup truck. I just want to ask a question. I got something left over here for you four gentlemen. Do you plan on adhering to the platform that you ran on? I would love a yes or no one answer. Oh, yes. We're not going to reduce Ridge Road. Is that true at all for you, gentlemen? Yes. Yes. Would you hold up that, that mailer? I'm sorry, sir? Hold up that mailer, please. Hold up the mailer. What does it say? It says no lane reduction on ridge. Whose names are at the bottom of it? Schenken, Hufford, Nellens, and Peterson. Peterson. God bless you. Colleagues, no lane reduction on ridge road. Well, God bless no you, sir. I'm asking that question for one simple reason, and I mean no disrespect whatsoever. I wish you nothing but health, happiness, and a good term. Thank you. That is why. And when I mean. look at the other politicians, when money comes in there, things go away. And I thank you all, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Scott Mason, 8639 Holman. Uh, later today, you guys are going to be discussing the Westland Bennett terms. I ask that you guys table that based on these couple of reasons. Number one, it says $225 an hour. That's the partner rate. They're a full service law firm with a paralegal as well as an associate. We want the associate to be shown up to court calls, but not at $225 an hour. Having worked in self-insurance for roughly 20 years, which is exactly what Munster is, at $225 for a partner, that's typically around $180. A paralegal is even less. We want a paralegal to be calling people for, say, I don't know, your deposition is tomorrow at 10 a.m. We don't want to be paying at $225 an hour on that. Um, secondly, uh, the, the biggest one to, that I found was the line about paying all costs. That should state that it should be reasonable and subject to bill review. You don't want to have to be paying for redundant work or anything like that, catch up or anything like that. Uh, there are a few others, but those are the two main reasons why I think you guys should table until you get some more clarity on it. Thanks. Ryan Dean, 8222 White Oak Avenue. I strongly oppose, as written, Resolution 2123. Sole decision making should not be left to only the town council president under any circumstances. There should be no language in a resolution for a reduction in ward force. The only reason I would see this to be implemented is to keep a campaign promise while hurting the services in the town that the residents rely on daily. A reduction in workforce should only be thoughtfully considered after a town manager is hired who has a strong background in public policy, is revealing staffing levels, and determines if there are any redundancies, inefficiencies, and or lack of funds, none that I am which I'm aware of. Public employees should not be used as pawns who now have to worry if their job is safe and sets up a dangerous precedent that every four years, they may lose their jobs. Additionally, the town is open to the explanation is if the reason for Dustin Anderson was terminated was due to illegal circumstances, such as embezzlement that was suggested by some of the members of the current council. These are serious accusations and cannot be stated without thoroughly being investigated. I would like to believe the town council reviewed all paperwork before making such inflammatory remarks. Thank you. Hello, <clears throat> Steve Tulowitzki, 8808 North Todd Avenue. Um, a couple of the comments today have made reference to the 
resignation or uh, the fact that you need to have a new town manager. So I'm hoping in some of the discussion that you can illuminate maybe what were some of the rationale that went behind that. Um, it seems surprising to many people, myself included, that 33, day, 33 days into office, you would have had the experience to know that this was not the right town manager for us. I'm kind of shocked by that. And I hope you can be open and transparent about what you're looking for in a town manager, uh, how you'll do that replacement. It is one of, if not the most uh, consequential, consequential roles in the town supporting residents. Um, so the more open that you can be, the maybe calmer the conversation can get about how we're going to be uh, running the government. I don't think people have voted for a fundamental change in the form of government. We don't have a mayor, we don't have an elected mayor. So it's at least my expectation that we continue with the town, town manager and the council as has been the, the case throughout the history of the town. So looking forward to hearing more about you know, what's going on in, in all of your decision making. I ask you a question. You were on the town council. Why didn't you give him a contract four years ago? Excuse me, Mr. President. Is this our time to ask the no, president's okay. question? Okay. We'll let him. Yeah. yeah we'll let him. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'd be happy to, to answer that question. Um, but it was a matter of a uh, matter of executive session, which you've just had. So, you know, I'd be out of order if I were to say anything about that. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mitch Barloga. I live at 1900 Bluebird Lane, and I am a proud new resident of Munster, although I've been a region resident for many years. I work at Northwest Indiana Regional Planning Commission, and my main job there is to help with bicycle and pedestrian safety. I know this council ran successfully on the idea of, of the Ridge Road project. I will simply state that that project as designed and as proposed and as funded at a 17 plus million dollar amount is a very good project for this community and I fully support it. I support it for the safety it'll provide for, for bicycle and pedestrians in this community, for the enhancement of a district near a new transit station and the amount of uh, popularity and uh, the destination it will become for the town of Munster. I know change is not easy, but these standards have proven to save lives where they have been employed, to slow down traffic, and to make it safer for bike and pets. So I appreciate your consideration going forward. There is time to work on this grant if you want changes. There's a few more years here. Trust me, I do know how to work these grants. So I hope we can work together going forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> having a seat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm all excited, John. You're going to speak <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> We're still in the open to the public session. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? Anyone else would like to come forward to be open to the public session here at the council meeting? Mm -hmm. Seeing no one, I will close the open to the public session. And that takes me to the consent agenda. Mr. President, I would make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as presented and as corrected by Mr. Dumervich. We have a second. second. In a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? Say no discussion. Miss Wendy, would you please uh, call the roll? Councillor Shinkin? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellon? Yes. Those guys are out. Takes us up to uh, old business, and we have no old business at this time. Takes us up to new business. Item number A, separation agreement. <clears throat> Give a motion. 
I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of town manager Dustin Anderson and to approve the separation and release agreement executed by Mr. Anderson on January 26, 2024. We have a second. I'll second that, Mr. President. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to make a comment. The position of the town manager is one of the most thankless jobs in town government. For the past four years, I had the pleasure of working with Dustin Anderson. Throughout this time, I've seen Dustin invest his energy and efforts in making Munster a better place to live. Recently, I, along with other members of the council, received over 25 letters of support for Dustin. While each letter was unique in its own right, there was a common theme. Dustin was helpful and assisted many residents, provided feedback, supported the town, and was a professional, professional, knowledgeable, generous public servant with his time in many public uh, positive attributes. While Dustin has been a catalyst for many town accomplishments over the past nine years, one needs to be highlighted. His work and dedication to the 45th Street underpass project was outstanding. The ability to coordinate the multi-jurisdictional alphabet soup funding model of NERPC, INDOT, and, and the RDA greatly reduced the cost of the town of Munster, provided an unbelievable amenity to the town of Munster, and brought this project to the finish line under budget. With this being said, I, I do accept his resignation and in support of the separation agreement in order for our town to come together and move forward. I further support and look forward to working with my fellow town councilors, town staff, and you, the resident, <clears throat> to start the search for a new town manager that will professionally lead us to a great future. Thank you, Councilor Gardner. <clears throat> Any other comments? Seeing no other comments, uh, I'll ask the clerk treasurer for a, for a vote. Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hoffert? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellens? Yes. That takes us up to item B, resolution 2122, authorized signer for NDOT business. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022, a, resolu a resolution authorizing the town council president to execute contracts and documents for IDOT. I second that. We have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion? And again, I would just like to comment that this is only for that particular uh, contract opportunity. And as we'll come across each contract will be brought to the council meeting and reviewed and set up for authorization if we're going to uh, approve it. Please call the roll. Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hoffer? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellis? Yes. Takes us up to item C. Resolution 2123, authorizing the town council president in executive staff changes. And I just want to just comment on that. That is something that would be approved by the council based on any uh, need to exercise those options. We have a motion. Am I going to follow motion? I'll, I'll move to approve resolution 2123 as presented. We have a second. A second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. I think at the time when we have change in our leadership at the town manager position, I think that's where the the history of Munster being having solid professional uh, staff driven government is very important. Uh, I believe that the town council should be looking at a visionary leadership role 
in this situation. And I think right now we should be working, focusing on that leadership and a visionary process rather than creating distractions for our employees. Staff changes should be careful and cautious. And I think after this short period of time, uh, especially without the proper type of communication we've had with some employees, I believe that this resolution is not a good resolution to have. Any other comments? Mr. President, I'm going to weigh in here. Um, I'm an attorney in my private practice. And with the absence of a town manager, the town of Munster lacks any suitable authority to address employee concerns. And yes, we've had meetings uh, in executive sessions to discuss this. I think it's appropriate to appoint you as council president to fill that gap in the middle. I echo what Councilman Gardner says. We want professional leadership here. And I think this resolution today provides that measure of professional leadership that the town expects. And for that reason, I will vote in favor of that resolution. Any other discussion, comments? Seeing none, Miss, yes, would you please uh, call the roll? Councilor Schenken? Yes. Councilor Hoffer? Yes. Councilor Gardner? No. Councilor Peterson? Yes. Councilor Nellens? Yes. One vote. Takes us up to uh, item number D. Police Department remediation. They had a sewer backup over there. And uh, we're looking for uh, payment on this. Mr. President, I would make a, a motion that we confirm approval of the proposal from Century Roofing in an amount not to exceed $171,170.80 and to pay the current Century Roofing invoice in the amount of $100,000. I'll second that. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further comments? I would just like to uh, compliment the clerk treasurer for her work in putting this number together. It's a pretty confusing topic. I do appreciate or yes, our controller for putting this. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the controller for putting this number together. It's very uh, well put together. Thank you. Sorry, controller. And this was a long time coming. You have your floors. Any other comments? I would just like to say I've taken a walk over there and walked around. My compliments to uh, Nancy for picking out the colors. And it's always painful when you have an accident like this and then get it cleaned up and then go through the remediation. You have to move. They just can't put the flooring under the desk as it sits. So I want to compliment the police staff for helping uh, being there to uh, assist with the contractors to get things moved and then back into place and getting their computers all set up. But it really does look nice. So with that, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, would you please go? Uh... Councilor Schenken? Yes. Councilor Hopper? Yes. Councilor Gardner? Yes. Councilor Peterson? Yes. Councilor Nellens? Yes. Five zero. Item number E is for public works. Purchasing a, uh, for the street division, a four by four uh, dump truck with a plow salt spreader. And it comes from uh, Bozak Ford was the quote. If I uh, recall on this, if it's accurate, it was about a one year delivery. So this was ordered some time ago and it has finally uh, come in and is ready for delivery. Mr. President, I would make a motion that we approve the purchase of a 2023 Ford F550 dump truck in Jose Ford at a cost of $61,319 minus the trade in value of $25,000 and a snow plow and salt spreader from WA Jones for a cost of $69,863 for a total overall cost of $106,000. $106, comma $182. Let me say that. $106,182. Sorry. We did. Sorry, Chief. That's not small potatoes. I'll second that motion, Mr. President. All righty. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. I 
would like to make a comment that it's always uh, in our policy, my policy, to make sure we have the right tools, right equipment for the right job. Uh, Munster has, stand, has stood the test of time as far as having their street plowed. Uh, we're complimented throughout the county, Northwest Indiana. Those are good things that we do. And in order to do that, you have to have the right equipment. And uh, I certainly wholeheartedly support this particular truck to add it to our fleet. Wendy? Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. And Councillor Nellens? Yes. 5 0. All right, that takes us up to item number F, which is the true look agreement. And, uh, Wendy, is that something you would? This is for the, um, it's the, um, thank you. That's, I couldn't think of that. The time lapse camera, and it's pointed at the, um, and it's actually up and running right now because the sun is shining. It hadn't been for a while, and actually, I will be grudging the event, but it is pretty cool. I did get a look at it over the weekend, and um, it, it will help us track the construction project on 45th Street where they're doing the new train station. So the camera's up, and this will get us 12 months worth of uh, watching the station being built. The uh, website or the address that we find this at? Uh... We'll be able to, I'm going to um, have it. it put on the town website. I haven't just yet. It hadn't been operational, but just because we can, this is what this looked like when they were doing the 45th Street underpass. It was just kind of cool. Get your So it's the fast time lapse and it lets you see what happened. Yeah, probably wasn't the best one to look at, but yeah. Okay. All right. We have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve payment to True Lock for a cost not to exceed uh, four thousand one hundred eighty-eight dollars for data hosting associated with the track and terminal station construction of the Nickty Westlake extension. I'll second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Again, I think it's uh, it is very interesting to see as. There's a lot that goes into these projects. So, all right, Ms. Wendy, if you would call the vote. All right, Councillor Schenken. Yes. Councillor Hopper. Yes. Councillor Gardner. Yes. Councillor Peterson. Yes. And Councillor uh, Nellens. Yes. Item number G is impact contact revision, con contract revision. Uh, we need to. Uh, True up with them with the number of devices that we have, and this is a request to uh, true that up and pay some additional money. Yeah, uh, this is an update. Our our uh, revise our monthly invoice to impact. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, monthly invoice for impact networking. Matic costs not to exceed fifteen thousand six hundred thirty at six one cents per. Month. We have a second. A second. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there further discussion? Do we know when our impact uh, <clears throat> license expires? It's this. I believe it's this year, but we always have a 30 day out. Is this something that we have a staff, a group of staff members working on uh, reviewing this? I know it's been a it's been an issue for some time. Do we have? Is this an issue that the staff is looking at at this time? I'm gonna say yes. It is. Okay. So. Or at least are we documenting the issues that we're having with in Yes, okay. I, I have a meeting with them this week. Oh. It's okay, it's on the list in the docket. Any other questions? But certainly we want to hold them to task and make sure they deliver things as agreed upon and uh, we'll go from there. All right, would you please call the roll? Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellens? Yes. Five stars. All right. Uh, item number H 
is the 2024 update on Centennial Park hours. And, uh, this is a request and it was approved by the park board. They would like to extend the hours at Centennial Park from its current 6 a.m. to dusk to 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. We talked to council earlier this afternoon and um, we need an or we will have an if council is agreeable to this, we will have an ordinance at the February 19th meeting that we will move forward with this. But we first wanted to make sure that council wanted to move forward. But the park board would like to see it at Centennial Park. Would you like to see a motion to change the, the hours at this at this meeting? Yeah, to, okay. yeah, so that we can move forward with the ordinance to see the ordinance at the next one. Okay. So it's just a step one. So it would be authorizing the ordinance. The order. Okay. Yes, thank you. I would like to make a motion that we authorize the change in daily park operation hours at Centennial Park to 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then we approve the necessary ordinances for the next meeting. I'll second. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there further discussion? Being none. Council. Sure. Councilor Schenken. Yes. Councilor Hopper. Yes. Councilor Gardner. Yes. Councilor Peterson. Yes. Councilor Nellens. Yes. yes. All right. That takes us up to item number I, the well, the well field balancing proposal, Centennial Park landfill. This is an increase in price that. Uh, we need, we need, as we continue to monitor the well field at the landfill, um, and that this needs to come before council. All right, do we have a motion? <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we approve the attached proposal dated November 20th, 2023 from Cavanaugh Environmental Field Service for one monthly balancing at $2,320 per monthly. Uh, to monitor the monthly well fields at Centennial Park landfill and the time and material for any repairs at various rates that are listed that are beyond the monthly scope. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Again, these well fields were required to monitor them, I think, basically as long as we have that landfill. To make sure we don't have any leakage or anything coming out uh, from that uh, particular uh, installation. Ms. Wendy? Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellens? Yes. Five zero. All right, item number J. Community Crossing Matching Grant, change number three, the memo and uh, change order. Yeah. Just the balancing of the work done. Um, for the paving and water main improvements at White Oak, Camellia, and Beverly, the community crossing um, 22 2. Okay. I'll make a motion to change order number three to the contract for the paving and water main improvements, White Oak, Camellia, and Beverly, uh, CCM G22.2, in the amount of $5,992.29. Second. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion, questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote. Uh, Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hoffert? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellens? Yes. That takes us up to item K. Public works additional cost for a new tandem axle dump truck. And uh, yeah. 
And this is the one that was ordered two years ago. Or no, this is the this is the two year Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want me to make a motion? Sure. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the total additional cost of twenty-seven thousand four hundred ninety-one and thirty cents for a new total cost of Two hundred twenty-six thousand nine hundred twenty-seven and thirty cents to Rush Truck Center for the purchase of a new twenty-four tandem axle dump truck unit number three three six. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second that. All right. Uh, further discussion. I just want to mention that as much as these truck costs. Uh, part of it is we ask when they're out there working to give them plenty of clearance back away from them when they're spreading salt or plowing because it's a two-way street. We don't want to damage your car and we certainly don't want to damage the truck. We want it to be able to continue on the road and maintaining our highways. So any other discussion? Seeing none. Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellis? Yes. That takes us up to uh, item number L. There we go. Item number L. This is the East 45th Street paving, relief of the final retainage. And uh, that's with the milestone. milestone and we have an invoice here. So I'll make a motion to approve final release of retainage for the East 45th Street Paving Project, a milestone amount of $57,829.67. We have a motion to second. Second. a second. Any further discussion? I would just like to send a big shout out to the staff for working on that project. That was a project. After the West 45th project was done, um, we had some issues. Uh, they, they were quick to respond, quick to add, quick to uh, find additional work to be done. There was with the water main break, and uh, everything was very seamless. There's a lot of coordination with that project, and I really reach out to the staff for that, doing a great job. I'll certainly uh, echo that since they did a terrific job. Those are, they take a while to get done. And uh, when we are all done, it's it's certainly good. But then during the, the route getting there, it can be very good. <clears throat> all right, no further comments. Call for a vote. Councillor Schenken? Yeah. Councillor Hoffer? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellis? Yes. Okay, uh, item number M is 2024 Lake Pond Ditch Maintenance. And this is with the Quality Control Contract. And they uh, pull the pumps that do the fountains and also add uh, treatment as is necessary to maintain the ponds with the algae and also any, any insects. Mr. President, for clarity's sake, I am the president of the White Oak Woods Condominiums. One of the ponds is located uh, around in, in what I would characterize our property. So I will recuse myself from this one. All right, we have a motion. I guess I'll make a, mo a motion to approve the aquatic control proposal. 375915 dated 111 2024 for the 2024 custom vegetation management program in amount of 26,185 and 15 cents. We have a second. A second. All right. Any further comments, questions? The only comment I would have is um, last year we had a number of issues during the summertime with the community estates uh, subdivision pumps uh, and the rip wrap around that. I would just ask that uh, staff is, is cognizant of that fact and then we get an early jump on uh, the community estates area, especially the rip wrap. Good comment, anything else? Again, uh, 
we need to have this service to keep things running properly. And uh, I think we found this vendor to be very reliable, very responsive. Um, Ms. Wendy, would you call the vote? Councillor Shinkin? Oh, yeah. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Stay. Thank you. Councillor Nellens? Yes. <clears throat> All right, that takes us up to item number N, which is the Westland and Bennett attorney uh, fee hourly rates. Mr. President, I would like to make a motion that we enter into agreement with uh, Westland and Bennett to represent the town of Munster uh, as attorneys at a rate of $225 per hour. I'll second. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there further discussion? Mr. President, um, during public comment, there was a very thoughtful comment made by a member of the public regarding these fees. And um, as a practicing attorney, I did not find anything wrong with this, but I think it would be uh, appropriate for uh, Attorney Westman to offer some comments, specifically. One of the concerns that was raised by the resident was that this fee uh, it was a fee being paid to associates and the nature of this fee in relationship to what would otherwise be considered retail attorney fees. I'm wondering if Mr. Weston can offer his thoughts on that. Sure. So, I'd please use the microphone, girl. I thought, I'm sorry. I'm not. All these years, I can't figure out the mic. Um, our typical rates are significantly higher than 225, both for partners and associates. So, for so the fee reflected in the engagement letter is is a uh, discounted rate from both what our associates would charge as well as our partners. Um, and that's why we gave the one flat rate overall as opposed to, so I suppose you're getting a deeper discount when it's Nicole or I, but, um, but it is discounted overall. In terms of the comments regarding reasonable expenses, um, I think my comment around here, um, we don't pass along expenses that aren't reasonable. I wouldn't incur an expense that wasn't reasonable. And if there's a an extraordinary expense, a litigation expense or whatever, typically we get prior approval before we incur those expenses and pass those along. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Weston, thank you. Thank you. I would also, um, a number of years ago, we did review different attorney rates, and there are certain attorneys that will charge towns two different rates, uh, a litigation rate and a, a regular rate. And uh, the litigation rate is much higher. We also found through uh, the Centennial Park litigation that um, Mr. W uh, Westland's rate was very appropriate. All right, any other questions, comments? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellens? Yes. <clears throat> All right, that takes us up to item O, which is uh, engagement letter from David P. <clears throat> Wicklin, attorney and his hourly fees, and he handles the, uh, some of the boards and commissions that we have. Mr. President, I would make a motion we uh, enter into a, a letter of agreement with uh, Mr. Wicklin, attorney at law, to serve and represent the Town of Munster Plan Commission, Board of Zoning Appeals, Park Board, and the Hammond Sanitary District through 2000, uh, through December 31st, 2024. I'll second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Mr. President, again, I, I wish to respond to that very thoughtful comment by Munster resident regarding the fees. And I don't think Mr. Wickham is here, but as a practicing attorney, I am aware that the fee that's being offered is substantially discounted from what would otherwise be considered a retail fee 
but would be charged by an attorney of Mr. Whitman's experience. And uh, as a result, I think it is it is consistent with the fees that are being uh, offered by uh, from Weston and Bennett. And I, I'm very appreciative of the fact that Attorney Whitman has similarly provided a discount to us that uh, is substantially lower than what we've been paying for the Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I would just like to also offer that uh, Attorney Wicklin, we are entering this agreement until the end of 2024. There was some question at the last meeting uh, that he was only going to be out for two to three months. Um, uh, Councillor Peterson and myself met with um, uh, Attorney Wicklin, and uh, this is now through December 31st, 2024. I thank both of you for doing that, setting that up. Any other comments, questions? Ms. Wendy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hopper? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nellens? Yes. That takes us up to Ordinance 1932. It's the first reading additional appropriation. Abbott. Um, this ordinance is to authorize additional appropriations in two funds. <laughs> when a budget is put together, it gets certified at a certain amount, and then if the need is discovered and if funds are available, council can go through a process where they can get additional appropriations. And that's what this ordinance is asking you to do. For two funds, one is the TIF allocation fund, and the other is the parkland escrow. In both funds, there's more than enough cash to cover um, this request for basically permission to spend those dollars. One, they're both for contracts that have already been filed uh, currently underway. President, I'll make a motion to, on first reading, approve ordinance 1932. A second. We have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion? I'm just going to say uh, with Ms. Abbott's approval and her assistance that the state of Indiana is something, it's something they require, and not all states do appropriation. But this is what we have to do. This is the process we have to follow in Indiana, and there will be at your next meeting a public hearing, which is also a requirement, and then final adoption. Ordinance at which point the appropriations will be in effect. Attorney Weston. Mr. President, I just want to make sure that I have the intent of the, of the motion. Um, if it's your intent to approve this on first reading tonight, then I need it. The first motion would be to consider it on first reading tonight. The second motion would be to adopt. The way it was written in the memo is a little confusing. Well, it's not. I wasn't sure based on the reading of the memo and the motion what exactly. So I want to be clear for the record. Right? I think we intended to do this on a two readings. Two readings. Yeah. So this is the motion is to approve this on a first reading. Schedule. So, so for every time you get that word, it's a very good thing. Schedule a public hearing. Okay. Repeat that again. <laughs> Hear the ordinance on first reading and schedule a public hearing for February 19th. So I make a motion to hear uh, the ordinance 1932 tonight and schedule it for a public hearing at the next town council meeting, which is scheduled for February 19th. And the second reading. And second reading. Second reading. Second reading. Yeah. At that time. I'll second that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Any further discussion, questions? Seeing none, we can call the vote. Councillor Schenken. Yes. Councillor Hopper. Yes. Councillor Gardner. Yes. Councillor Peterson. Yes. Councillor Nellis. Yes. Okay. Um, item number Q which is ordinance 1933, first reading budget reduction. And 
the staff as well help us with this. This is kind of the opposite of the previous ordinance that we just listened to. Um, we, when the budget got certified at the beginning of the year, we reviewed all of our funds to see where they were um, and if they can support the full budget that was contemplated at the when they were adopted back in October. Um, and we have a list of funds here that we feel they need to take a reduction in order to remain balanced and to meet their reserve. Uh, they're listed there. Um, uh, municipal surtax, the electric fund, water cash operating, solid waste management. Um, we believe we can still accomplish the goals that council has. It's just we need to take a reduction at this time. So the way this works is we send our budget request downstate to Indianapolis. They look at it and it can come back with a reduction. The, the funds that are being contemplated here are not being reduced because of the state. These are home rule funds that council has authority over. We've just reviewed them because when the budget is put together in October, we're making assumptions about how much will be spent to the end of 2023. In January of 2024, we know exactly how much cash we had and how much we can support in the coming year. So that's why we're asked. We're asking for this reduction in the coming year because we don't have the cash we anticipated. Okay. Mr. President, I would make a motion to hear pr proposed ordinance 1933 for budget reductions on first reading and schedule second reading for February 19, 2024. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further comments, questions? In some ways, this is a housekeeping matter, but I don't want to take it light because our uh, controller does an excellent job and watches and monitors all these things and keeps us in compliance. And uh, we appreciate everything that she does and our clerk treasurer. Uh, they're always on their toes. With that, I will ask for a vote. Councillor Schenken? Yes. Councillor Hoffer? Yes. Councillor Gardner? Yes. Councillor Peterson? Yes. Councillor Nelland? Yes. Any reports tonight? Any portfolio uh, reports? Announcements all town council meetings will begin at 7 p.m. unless otherwise noted. Our next meeting is February 19th, 2024. Regular town council meeting and regular redevelopment commission. Before we close this meeting, I have one announcement. Sure. Um, a couple of days ago or so, there was a, a social media post. Chief Sheckle is celebrating his 35th year on the police force here in Munster. Thank you, Chief, for that 35 years. Also, as I was looking at public safety, we have a number of police off or fire department personnel that have been here more than 35 years. I'd like to recognize them also. Chris Volnick, Kevin Novacek, Mark Hyduke Jr., Kevin Hagee, Jose Serrano, Ron Zavetic, and uh, Fred ha uh, Herman Sr. I'd like to thank all those people that are part of the public safety area for all their years of dedication and service to the town of Monster. Make a motion to uh, adjourn this meeting. Second. Ms. Gray, do you want to call the roll or voice? I don't, I don't need to do a voice vote for that one. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, that concludes our uh, town council meeting. We will go right into our redevelopment commission meeting, the regular meeting for February 5th. John, how are you? All right, I'd like to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, have you taken the roll yet? Commissioner Schenken. Here. Commissioner Hopper. Here. Commissioner Gardner. Here. Commissioner Peterson. Here. Commissioner Nellis. Here. And our liaison to the school board, John Castle. All right. Cool. <laughs>
you know, school board member John Castro is always regular. He's always here, and we appreciate that. So well, thank you very much. All right, we'll open up the uh, open to the public comments. Uh, this has the same regulations and comments as the main meeting. So if anyone would like to come forward and speak at the public comment here for the Redevelopment Commission, you're certainly welcome to come forward. State your name and address. All right, is anyone interested in coming to the open to the public session here for redevelopment? Seeing no one, I will uh, close the open to the public comment that takes us to the consent agenda. Mr. President, I'd like to accept, uh, make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. Commissioner Schenken? No. Yes. Commissioner Hopper? Yes. Commissioner Gardner? Yes. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Commissioner Nellis? Yes. We have no uh, old business, no new business, any reports, no announcements. Looking for an adjournment. I make a motion and adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. All right, there. Students that need pictures, come up here quick and we'll get pictures taken. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>